a break here. Our story begins in Northern California over a hundred years ago when locals began to spread rumors of bizarre occult rituals being conducted in the ancient redwood groves of Sonoma County. As the decades passed, it became clear these incredible stories had a basis in truth, and their source was a 2,700-acre private club known as the Bohemian Grove. Then in a time period between the mid-1970s and the early 1990s, scores of reporters attempted to infiltrate the Grove. All attempts were unsuccessful. Grove security identified them, threw them out for trespassing, or in some cases, had the local police arrest them. To many, it seemed, the Grove's secrets would never become public. All of that changed on July 15th, 2000, when we ripped aside the veil of secrecy and were successfully able to penetrate the Bohemian Grove on their high holy day and videotape the cremation of care ritual. Finally, we learned that the Grove was only one chapter in a larger, worldwide secret society hell-bent on bringing in a one-world government. What would the people do if they knew that the majority of the leaders in the corporate world, as well as government, were deep occultists? Before the year 2000 and our successful penetration of the Grove, the mainstream media denied that rituals were indeed taking place there and said that elite from all over the world were simply meeting in secret to have a good time. After the footage we had shot of the Cremation of Care ritual aired first in England and then in the United States on national TV, the mainstream media changed their tune. The San Francisco Chronicle had previously refused to report on the Grove. After our infiltration, they wrote as many as five articles a year detailing the bizarre activities that were taking place inside the Grove, including the fact that top presidential advisor Karl Rove had tapped Arnold Schwarzenegger inside the Grove to run for governor on California's recall ballot. Even the vaunted New York Times reported on the Bohemian Grove, but attacked us for sneaking in. The New York Post was one of many national publications to report on all of the homosexual activities going on at the Grove. The Post reported in its page six gossip column that Chad Savage, gay porno star, was quote, servicing the moguls at the Grove. But a disturbing theme ran through the body of the reportage. Okay, it's true. The elite meet behind closed doors and there's gay porn stars and gay prostitutes being shipped in like beluga caviar. What's the big deal? Let's just let them have their privacy. And so they have lakeside chats calling for world government. Really, they're not bad people. The people we should watch are those that are exposing it. They're really dangerous weirdos. Of all the hit pieces that we've been victims of, the worst was conducted on national television by Brian Lamb, the director of C-SPAN, and some shifty-eyed professor they dug up, who appeared to be flashing Masonic hand signs, while he tried to eviscerate our character by implying that there wasn't even a ritual at all. Why, Alex Jones claims they do this ritual. Meanwhile, the Bohemian Grove has gone public to the newspapers, admitting they conduct rituals. They, the, overnight, they had a, a gentleman on by the name of Alex Jones, who has a, a talk show in Texas, I think, and it's heard in communities around the United States. And he was talking about the Bohemian Grove Club, as if that's where it all happens. That's where all the decisions are made. There are thousands of people go there, and there's some kind of a ceremony surrounding an owl and all that. Have you followed this at all? Yes, I, I have, even though the show is on past my bedtime, but uh, Alex Jones has been talking about this for, uh, for quite a while. The Bohemian Grove, of course, is a privately owned Redwood Grove up in Sonoma County, north of San Francisco, where every summer there is a get-together of... Uh, uh, the wealthy and uh, and well placed, all uh, all male, uh, who uh, get together for general cavorting, socializing, lectures, symposia, and so on, in an atmosphere that is completely removed from public scrutiny. 
Uh, Alex Jones and some others have uh, suggested for a long time that there are all sorts of nefarious rituals that go on. Human sacrifices that were uh, being committed by the elite who uh, attend these gatherings. A lot of things people feel are organized behind the scenes with the Bilderbergers, the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, the, Mas the Masons, you can keep going down the list, and you, the Illuminati, One World Government, New World Order, Skull and Bones. You've got more information on that than I do, so call us at the top of the hour and talk to our guests about that, and we'll try to sort it out. Define Illuminati. The Illuminati were a small uh, quasi-Masonic group founded in Central Europe in 1776. There was a surprising development in the summer of 2005. A Bohemian Grove employee decided to videotape some of the activities in the Grove and to give us the footage. The footage you're seeing was shot on a tiny digital camera, so the quality isn't the best, but the images are powerful. The individual that gave us this footage asked that we not release their name. Our source was able to confirm what we had seen in internal Bohemian Grove documents and annals that the elite of the elite attend the Grove. Our source personally saw New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson in attendance, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, the famous newsman Walter Cronkite, and countless other luminaries. Without giving away the identity of our source, we can tell you this. The most elite encampment within the Grove is Mandalay. Other members of the Grove were not even allowed to approach within a hundred yards of this compound. Swarming with secret service, valets, private French cooks, and private security men. In the compartmentalized system of the New World Order, Mandalay is an elite within an elite at the very top of the pyramid's capstone. Things have changed in the last few years at the all-male encampment. Since its founding in 1872, no females have been allowed in. But under pressure, they've allowed women some jobs in parking cars and in the kitchens in special cloistered areas. Our source is male. We'll call him Kyle. He reported to us that it was a constant irritant inside the grove being asked by old men if he, quote, slept around and wanted to have some fun. During one of the festival's revelries, known as Gypsy Jazz, they pause to thank the author of the music. They talk about what a wonderful jazz player he was, but that sometimes he did hang around with women, and the crowd boos with disgust. He disappeared from time to time, often with women. <laughs> He thought stealing was fun. The Grove's own internal annals brag that the Manhattan Project for the plan to create the A-bomb was hatched inside this building known as the Chalet. The Strategic Defense Initiative, better known as Star Wars, was also the brainchild of Grove members and was born inside the Chalet. of the Cold War. Top Soviet dignitaries traveled to the Bohemian Grove for secret meetings with the heads of the U.S. government as well as corporate leaders. Our source worked at the Grove in the summer of 2004 and the summer of 2005, and he was able to obtain two program covers for the cremation of care ceremony as well as a 2005 membership list, which reads like a who's who of U.S. and European elite. Former President Jimmy Carter, former President George Herbert Walker Bush, President Bush, Henry Kissinger, George Shultz, the list goes on and on. This is a video still of the sign at the entrance to the path to the Hillbilly Club where President Bush stays. Look at that happy little devil with his forked tail dancing and smiling and those sharp little teeth. Oh, it's so Christian. But again, President Bush had such a Christian name in Skull and Bones, Magog, or Satan's war leader. 
The Grove is dominated by Republicans, the supposed party of Christian conservative family values. But the Grove has its share of high-powered Democrats as well. It's also important to note that the Grove itself was founded in 1872 by West Coast journalists and that the National Press Club adopted the iconography of the Grove for its great seal. There are three major icons used in the cremation of care ritual. Moloch, the owl idol, the curved staff carried by the high priest, and the eternal flame lamp, the Arabian style lamp, which the priest uses to ignite his torch, which he then uses to burn the human effigy care. Here are video stills of the effigy after it has been burned on the altar in the morning. Many researchers of the global elite believe that real sacrifices are going on at the Grove. When I filmed the ceremony in 2000, I saw no evidence of this. It looked like an effigy, and the Druid priests were easily able to pick it up and take it up the steps to the platform. Our inside source informs us that there are actually four effigies used in the ceremony. One brought in on the back of the wagon, another that's used behind the trees, another that's brought across by the Grim Reaper to the steps of the idol, and still another effigy that is placed on a black altar before Moloch, the demon god, and burned. And this is the first and only time that video has ever been shot inside of the owl idol. We can now confirm that the owl is metal with a stone facing. There are some more stills inside the Grove. Our social lives, going to the football game or the PTA, a little bit different than your average world leader or corporation chief. No, in their spare time, they worship Moloch and do mock human sacrifices. We just need to get used to that and accept them as our leaders. Think about it. If your neighbor was engaging in mock human sacrifices to Moloch, the demon idol, was worshipped all over the Mediterranean and the Middle East, would you let that neighbor walk your dog or house sit or how about babysit your children or be in control of the nuclear launch codes? Well, let me give you a revelation. They are in control of the national deficit, of Congress, of your bank account, of your local police department, and they see you as cattle, as their slaves. They released this photo of a 1915 ritual. Here you have the hooded figure over the mock sacrifice. And here's a simulated hanging from 1908. In this picture, you see a photo from 1909 with what looks like public officials in attendance. A black boy is tied down to some type of table, and around him we see people in strange garb. I'll leave it to you to figure out what they're doing. In 2004, the Grove released this photo from 1934 of members in hoods. The Canaanite deity Moloch was worshipped in Greece, Babylon, and then later in Europe. It is normally symbolized by a bull or an owl or some type of horned beast, and children are sacrificed to it. It is the precursor of all modern death cults. And let's look at that deity they worship, Moloch. A Semitic deity mentioned in the Bible whose worship was marked by the human sacrifice of children. Here's a video still I shot while I was inside of the encampment. You see a human skull in effigy. I was able to get out of the cult compound with this program cover from the cremation of care. And right on the front, where a child would be burned, they had photoshopped in the image of a skeleton burning in the flames. What purpose does this all serve, having world leaders congregate and engage in an ancient Canaanite ritual of mock child sacrifice? It's a way of binding them together, whether it's George Herbert Walker Bush or Henry Kissinger or Ronald Reagan or Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, who's been a member since 1984. It's about bringing them together. Nowhere is the origin of the cult more in evidence than in former German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt's own autobiography, Men and Powers, a political retrospective. He talks about how they have 
their own German groves where they do these rituals, these, quote, druidic rituals. But he says his favorite place to do the rituals is at Bohemian Grove. This is a book that you can get at the library written by him. He talks about the Trilateral Commission, the CFR, the Bilderberg Group, and world government. And he says that much of the decisions are made at the Bohemian Grove. We were able to obtain the internal annals of the Bohemian Grove from 1987 to 1996, a publication only given to members. And in it, we see pictures of George W. Bush and his father, Newt Gingrich. We see all of these different famous individuals there at the Grove. Walter Cronkite, Jimmy Carter, Jack Kemp, Richard Milhouse Nixon. The list goes on and on. If you're still doubting reality, here is a November 1989 issue of Spy Magazine. The Grove released photos of themselves dancing around dressed like women. And in the article, they admit that they do mock human sacrifices. The article went on to show artist renditions of the Moloch idol, as well as discussing how they bus in male prostitutes and how AIDS was a big problem. Then a New York Post article in July of 2004 reported how a top gay porn star serviced the moguls at the Bohemian Grove. This 1914 Bohemian Grove annal has a swastika on its cover, and inside it talks about how they're a German death cult founded by the Illuminati. But some of you are saying, wait a minute, the Nazis invented the swastika. That was their symbol. You're talking about 1914 and 1920. My friends, the swastika was used by the Buddhists. It was used by Native Americans. It is a sun symbol. And it was used by Druids in Europe thousands of years ago. In the 1920s and 30s in the U.S., it was a symbol of good luck, like a horseshoe. But for the Nazis and members of the Bohemian Grove, it was a symbol of power. And Adolf Hitler was obsessed with the occult. The roots of Nazi Germany grew out of groups like the Thule and Thule Society, organizations obsessed with black magic, which themselves sprung from older organizations like the Illuminati. All of these groups corresponded and called themselves Orders of the Death's Head. Adolf Hitler was a member of the Thule Society. Here you see one of their publication covers from 1919. He took their symbol as the signet of his party. It has been reported that after Madame Blavatsky died, Aleister Crowley became the head of the German Illuminati, also known as the OTO. Aleister Crowley was called the most evil man alive because of the bloodthirsty rituals he engaged in. It's important to note that both of his children died in questionable circumstances. So should we be surprised that the leader of the Third Reich, who killed millions of people, was an adherent of both of these sickening individuals? The Waffen-SS were the henchmen of the Nazi party, and they wore an aluminum or silver death's head on their hats. Here you have a famous field marshal of World War I, and adorning his headdress is a death's head. In reality, all of Hitler's actions were nothing more than a manifestation of the deepest and darkest dreams of the Order of Death. And remember that the Order of Skull and Bones of Bohemian Grove are nothing more than offshoots of this global movement. The Nazis wore a skull and crossbones on their hats. Compare that to the skull and bones symbol. And beneath that, an early Nazi party medal not just with a swastika, but the 32 or 322 of Skull and Bones. We see these symbols throughout Nazi culture, especially on their icons and standards. Hitler believed that they drew power from these symbols, and he publicly talked about it. Here is an official photo taken from the Presidential Library of George Herbert Walker Bush, showing him standing with his classmates. And there it is, the Order of Death symbol the skull and crossbones with 322 beneath it. Would it surprise you to know that one of the chief members of Bohemian Grove, Thomas Watson, was also an adherent of Adolf Hitler's ideology and that international business machines were integral in controlling the death camps? IBM was absolutely essential 
in assisting Hitler in numbering and exterminating the Jews and other undesirables. The famous tattoos on Jews' arms were international business machine numbers that were entered into the computers. The computers would then decide how long to keep someone alive and how hard they could be worked according to height and body weight as well as age. Here's a photo of Mr. Watson with Adolf Hitler in the late 1930s. It's not a coincidence that today IBM is the backbone of national ID card technology in the United States and across the world. Ford and General Motors were also involved in the Nazi war machine right through the war. And not one of these robber baron industrialists was ever prosecuted. Here is the international business machine that calculated the deaths of millions. The modern Olympic symbols have nothing to do with Greece. They were drawn and designed by Adolf Hitler, and we still use them today. The order of the death said symbols are all around us, but the general public is too blind to see it. Now we will explore how the American branch of the Illuminati aided and abetted Adolf Hitler, and how the Bushes were the first family when it came to treason. I've been an investigative reporter and a journalist for 35 years. I've worked in every major media market in the United States, and I've written for more than 100 newspapers and magazines nationally and internationally. So last September 17th, I became the first journalist in U.S. history to go to the U.S. National Archives and the Library of Congress and pour over the thousands of pages of documents in both places to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt or any refutation of the facts that Prescott Bush, the grandfather of George W. Bush, and George Herbert Walker, his maternal great-grandfather for whom his daddy is named, were Nazi traitors to the country who should have been tried for treason. Two weeks ago in uh, early August, uh, a major world newspaper, The Guardian of London, finally got on the story internationally and they flew a renowned reporter of theirs named Duncan Campbell over to Washington to take me back to the archives and Library of Congress so that they could verify that these explosive documents were real and I didn't have forged copies. Prescott Bush was the grandfather of George W. Bush and the father of George Herbert Walker Bush, and George Herbert Walker Bush is named for his father-in-law, George Herbert Walker. Prescott Bush graduated from Yale in 1917 and was in Skull and Bones with E. Roland Harriman, who was the younger brother of W. Averill Harriman. The Bush family really had nothing going. They were essentially social climbers and opportunistic people. At the time that Prescott Bush met Dorothy Walker, he was a tire salesman. And George Herbert Walker, as all fathers do when their daughter's going to marry someone, uh, said in his heart, you know, it, it's, not a, it's not an appropriate thing socially that my daughter marry a tire salesman. So he brought Prescott Bush first into Brown Brothers Harriman and then Union Banking Corporation. Uh, in actuality, it was anything but a bank. It was essentially a Nazi money laundering operation that had a lot of tentacles into a lot of different other businesses. They owned a, a shipping line called Hamburg American Line, for example, which was the first Nazi front business seized, although the line was no longer operational in 1942. In the early 1930s, it transported Nazi spies into the U.S., and then their promotional ads offered cash rewards to any American citizens who would go back on Hamburg American lines and proselytize for Hitler. Eight months after the U.S. had entered the war, the New York uh, Herald Tribune ran a front page article, Hitler's Angel has three million in U.S. Bank. And it caused a major scandal and just rocked the world of politics. Brown Brothers Harriman, which George Herbert Walker and Prescott Bush were affiliated with and partners in, uh, worked with IG Farben, which operated Auschwitz. Prescott Bush, he did a number of things that were not only anti-American, but were pro-Hitler, and he did all that he could to proselytize for Hitler and the rise of his Third Reich because the largest client, Fritz Thiessen, of his patron, W. Averill Harriman, dictated what kind of behavior he would practice to enhance his own career. 
So he was put on the board of directors of Union Banking Corporation, and he was also a shareholder in Union Banking Corporation along with E. Roland Harriman. But what's interesting about what the documents show is that they clearly state that all of the shareholders were phantom shareholders for Fitz Thiessen and did his bidding directly. So the point I'm making is it's not as if they bought these shares of stock as a passive investment to hopefully profit from the war. They were directly doing the bidding of the individual who built the Nazi war machine. Uh, some very shocking documents that I saw at the Library of Congress uh, two weeks ago on August 10th, uh, had on August 9th, excuse me, had to do with the hearings of the McCormick Dickstein Committee of November 1934. Show that Prescott Bush and the uh, DuPont family, the Remington family, and J.P. Morgan tried to overthrow the U.S. government, assassinate FDR, and put a Hitler-style fascist state in place. I have in my possession testimony from the McCormick Dickstein Committee in November of 1934 by one of the fascist plotters that they were going to follow Hitler's model exactly and impose martial law on the United States, round up unemployed people that were worthless to the economy and troublemakers and Jews and put them into internment camps. And their plan was, if necessary, to exterminate the people that could not be part of the effort. The only reason the coup attempt in 1934 didn't succeed is that they, led, they hired the wrong general to lead it, General Smedley Butler, the great Marine hero, two-time Congressional Medal of Honor winner, who worked with the plotters just long enough to be able to identify who they were and then blew the whistle on them to Congress. Incredibly, after being warned by the FBI and the Justice Department and the Treasury Department to cease and desist in their Nazi dealings, they had continued them until 1951. There had been 28 additional seizures of Nazi assets and Nazi business fronts between late 1942 and 1951, and that they had moved Nazi assets into Switzerland, Brazil, Argentina, and Panama. And they had continued to do business with their primary Nazi patron, who was Fritz Thiessen, who backed Hitler beginning in 1921, and who was the wealthiest man in Germany, and a steel and coal baron, who, with his partner, Friedrich Flick, essentially built the Nazi war machine along with I.G. Farben. In 1951, when uh, Fritz Thiessen died in Argentina, Union Banking Corporation was liquidated by the U.S. government, and Prescott Bush received $1.5 million for his holdings in his Nazi business, and that was the beginning of the Bush family fortune for all intents and purposes. George Bush doesn't take his philosophical foundation from the Bible or the teachings of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. George Bush takes his inspiration from what he learned in Skull and Bones and from the Thule Society that Hitler and Goebbels and Goring cut their teeth in, Bohemian Grove, these evil organizations that perpetrate the ugly things that these criminals are doing to this country for which they must be held accountable. Now you look at the Republican National Convention this week and you bring in Arnold Schwarzenegger to speak last night. Schwarzenegger is the son of a Nazi. He has praised Nazis. He has praised Hitler. He talked last night in terms like we will not falter, we will not waver, we will win this war on terror. He's a leader who doesn't flinch, who doesn't waver, and does not back down. Well, that's exactly the speeches that Hitler made after the Reichstag fire. Terrorism and the homeland being under attack are precisely the issues that Hitler used to subvert everything within the German system of government. This is a criminal regime. They not only emulate Hitler, but its genesis comes from Hitler. And I defy anyone, a historian, journalist, author, anyone, to come forward and disprove my premise that you cannot differentiate Hitler's invasion of Poland in 1939 and the Reichstag fire and his attempt to dominate the world from George W. Bush's unprovoked invasion of Iraq and subversion of the Constitution through the Patriot Act after 9-1-1, which I submit is his Reichstag fire. Karl Rove and his minions are every bit the masters of propaganda that Joseph Goebbels was. They literally took lessons from Goebbels and Goring about how to create such brilliant propaganda 
that unreality can become reality and reality can be subverted to fantasy political subterfuge right before your eyes. So there's just an endless broken record that is leading up to the present era that the Bush family has had a single goal for a hundred years, which is to become the most powerful family on the planet and to rule the world. And they are on the verge of doing that under George W. Bush. It's critical that every citizen of this country rise up and do something because the day of reckoning is at hand and uh, these people are Nazis. They are practicing Nazi philosophy. They are mimicking Nazi tactics and time is running out. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the website. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, he's not the nominee. And, uh, but, uh, Look, I look for. Are you prepared to lose? No, I'm not going to lose. You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322, secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim, but one thing is not a secret. I disagree with this president's direction. Most people don't know the order of Skull and Bones at Yale is simply one chapter in a larger global organization known by many as the Illuminati. Its symbol is a skull and crossbones and the number 322. Skull and Bones is the name used by the uninitiated or non-members. The true name of the organization is the Order of Death or the Order of the Death Said. George Bush and John Kerry have both been initiated in the same way. They swore an oath to the tomb, to the order of death above all others, and to wage eternal war against all of humanity. In April of 2001, ABC News was able to get a few minutes of video of a small portion of the ritual that's conducted outside in a courtyard. What they witnessed was macabre, chants of death equals death and devil equals death, accompanied by mock human sacrifices. President Taft was a prominent member of Skull and Bones, and in 1900, he became the first president to visit Bohemian Grove in Northern California, a satellite of Skull and Bones. For three generations, the Bushes have been members of Skull and Bones, and for three generations, they've traveled to Northern California and the Bohemian Grove. There are many prominent foreigners, like German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt, Ronald Reagan, Richard Nixon are pictured here in 1957 at the Bohemian Grove. Both men wrote about the organization in their public memoirs. Schwarzenegger is a reported visitor to the Bohemian Grove, as well as former President Jimmy Carter. While in New York, we ran into the Carl Rove of four administrations. David Gergen, top presidential advisor to Ford, Reagan, George Herbert Walker Bush, and Bill Clinton. We couldn't believe our luck. It just so happens that David Gergen is also a prominent member of the Bohemian Grove, the offshoot of Skull and Bones. This insider of insiders, a staple of the White House for 20 two years got very upset when we brought up bohemian grove to him he didn't deny its existence he didn't deny that he was a member he didn't deny the rituals he just became angry and didn't act very gentlemanly the real wild card here are the demonstrators we just don't know where this is going to go there's a while they were peaceful today there's a lot more anger among those demonstrators than is evident you talk to them today they're pretty angry people so that's the big wild card Hey, Mr. Gergen, can we talk to you for a second? Uh, where are you from? I'm Alex Jones. I have a TV show in Austin. I make documentaries. Tell me just a few questions about the convention. Yeah, yeah. Well, is there a camera? Or are you? Yeah, right there. Just about. Yeah, but I, I just want to get your permission first. Here. Okay. Okay. Just it's local. I can. I, I've got. No, I understand. Just about a minute or two. Okay, great. We're talking to David Gergen, and he has advised several presidents, and of course has uh, written quite a few uh, books, and uh, is a, I would call you a political pundit or researcher. 
come and tear it over the hill, whatever. Okay. Uh, how long have you been in New York? About six, four hours. What do you think of this circus? Well, I haven't seen all the protests yet, but I've never seen as much security for a convention as we have here. And it's, uh, uh, you know, the city's uh, almost closed down. I think it's remarkable. I think it's an unfortunate turn for politics that we have to have this many police around. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, news articles and reports saying that there's a heightened risk of terror attacks. Uh, do you think that that's, uh, do you think there's a chance of that? Or? Or comments I think, well, listen, they just arrested, uh, I think, or broken up some plot uh, allegedly to, uh, Somebody wanted to blow up subways. Yeah, I think it's very real danger. And you've got it's the Madison Square Garden is sitting right, you know, basically on top of a uh, train station. And Boston uh, Convention was right on top of a train station. Yeah, I just have to remember that trains are very uh, accessible, vulnerable. And that's what happened in Spain. They went after trains and they blew some trains up. So, and it wasn't very expensive. So I think there's that danger, but I think the police are on top of it. They're treating this as a special security event, which means there's no. Not only the, 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 the obvious police around, but believe me, there's a lot of private stuff going on here. Okay, one last question. I read a Washington Times article many years ago where you had a comment about the organization, and then now it's been in the Wall Street Journal, it's been in a lot of different newspapers, and that's the Bohemian Grove. And back in, what was it, 1996 when you joined uh, as a Clinton advisor, they were the Republicans were criticizing you, oh, what about Bohemian Grove, and then you counter... Uh, and then you countered them by saying, hey, I don't run around in the woods naked. What did that mean? Here is the before-mentioned Washington Times article where he said, I didn't run around naked like they do. I, I, don't, I, don't, know what, I don't know what quote you're referring to. I'm not aware of any quote like that. Uh, listen, uh, I am a, 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 a happy member of the Bohemian Grove. I like the, uh, the folks who come there. And uh, it's really inappropriate for me to uh, talk about a, uh, uh, the group beyond that. Thank you. Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, frankly, that's, uh, that, uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. <laughs> Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, frankly, that's, uh, that, uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Really? That's right. Well, I'm Alex Jones, and I snuck in there in 2000. I'm the guy that blew it wide open and got the video. It's been on national TV. Well, I disrespect you for that. You do? I do. But it's a lot of big public officials going in there. You don't took, we deserve to know? You, you took an I don't know anything about you, and I don't know anything about your film. But if you go in there with an understanding, you violated that understanding by releasing that film, and I don't respect you for that. Really? But you we have public officials you, there, I'm sorry. You took an understanding when you went in there that you would not do that film. And you did, did you have an understanding when you went in there? No. Did you crash it? Yes. Yeah, and it has no trespassing signs there too, doesn't it? No, they put them yes, up sir. after. Oh, I'm I sorry. Just walked in. I'm sorry, sir. I've been there before. I know what I want the circumstances are, and I'm sorry you uh, violated the understandings. That was not that was not a gentlemanly thing to do. But what about the ritual? Is the ritual gentlemanly? <laughs> Sir, everything uh, you, I, I, don't, I don't owe you this comment. I know. I appreciate you, 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 you have you. This is what's called ambush journalism, and I disrespect you for that as well. So thank have you, you ever and goodbye. Been in the ritual? That's none of your damn business. Oh, that's right. Listen, oh. listen. You go around and and make understandings with people and violate them. You you ambush people on the streets, and that's that's inappropriate form of journalism. If you wish to practice that, that's fine. But don't ask others to respect you for it. If you want to, you, you can do it. You're free American, like anything you want. If you want to be uncivil and rude and ungentlemanly, that's up to you. But don't expect the rest well, of us to say, oh, well, you're there, one. Mr. Gergen. I'm sorry. Nobody sets policy in there. We try to be gentlemen, and obviously, you don't belong there. Weaving spiders come out here? <laughs> Thank you. you ever and goodbye. Been in the ritual? That's none of your damn business. It's none of your damn business. Oh. That's right. Listen. Oh. Listen. Just look at him. That's a face keeping a lot of secrets. He's got some stories to tell. And remember that Washington Times article? It talked about all the other organizations that he resigned from. It mentions the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, all of them groups dedicated to setting up a world government and destroying American sovereignty. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go watch. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> I...
Aleister Crowley, who dubbed himself the Beast and the most evil man alive, was a fellow traveler with some of the most powerful people in British society, including prominent royals. The Church of Satan, the Temple of Set, the OTO, the Golden Dawn, Skull and Bones, Bohemian Grove, the Blue Lodge, the Scottish Rite, the 33rd Degree, it seems like there are hundreds of different occultic groups, but all they are are different denominations in the same religion, the Egyptian and Babylonian mystery schools. Albert Pike, who was the supreme grand mason of the entire world, founded the Ku Klux Klan. But you don't hear Jesse Jackson calling for his statue to be removed in Washington, D.C. Why is that? Because Jesse Jackson is a 33rd degree Mason. Now don't get me wrong, most Masons are what high level occultists call porch Masons or outsiders. They themselves are considered neophytes by those in the inner circle or those nearer the top of the pyramid. They're compartmentalized. They believe that their great work as they call it is to help society. But in reality, they're being controlled and manipulated. The Knights of the Secret Circle, the Knights of the Golden Circle. This is what high-level KKK members call themselves. But even low-level KKK members do not understand that the KKK itself is part of a larger Masonic organization. Most Masons detest the Klan, but they've never looked on their own temple walls at the paintings of Albert Pike that adorned them and asked themselves why the founder of the Klan is hanging in their temple. This is the power of hidden in plain view, a favorite trick of Luciferians. Where did this dark thinking start, this, this black spirituality? The central thread goes back to ancient Egypt and Babylon with the mystery schools. They knew that knowledge is power and so secret societies were formed to guard the secrets of medicine, architecture, government, agriculture. Secret societies are nothing more than the first intelligence agencies. Knowledge had to be guarded, but over time, elites abused their control of the knowledge and used it to dominate their populations. And the same sciences of control are being used today. That's why the elite today relishes secrecy. They know that it is the fount of their power. They seek to dumb down the population, not just to hoard their secret knowledge to make us even more mindless, more domesticated, like braying sheep to the slaughter. Their religion is the science of sophistry, the science of the con artist, the science of the despot, the dictator, the tyrant, the controller, the charlatan, the liar. They come to kill, steal, and destroy. They are parasites. They are anathema to free, dynamic human societies. Know your enemy. Stand up for love and life and family and resist the new world order and the Babylonian slave state our enemies are attempting to construct. I want to tell everybody out in TV land how they can come to the Grove, where their elected leaders, along with the big bankers and the heads of media, meet, along with some European royalty, every year to decide how to run the country. You can fly into San Francisco, or you can fly into Santa Rosa. You can even fly into Sacramento, and you know, well, you just drive out uh, to Highway 101. You take uh, Highway 12 out west towards the coast. You get about 10 miles out from the coast, right outside the little town of Monterio. And the town of Monterio, off the main drag, uh, you'll take the Bohemian Avenue. And it dead ends right here at the 2,700-acre Redwood Grove uh, entrance, where your world leaders, um, among other things, set policy for much of the planet and dress them in black and red robes and worship, uh, well, Moli. To purchase additional copies of this film,